We're going to do two different ideas today, but each of them, as I was mentioning you to the people before, is a continuation of something we've seen before. Uh, but when we do step it up, it becomes more challenging, as you'll see shortly. Yesterday, we had this idea of taking an inequality, something like this, and representing it visually. You end up with a region. Um, we've taken one-dimensional inequalities, you put them on the number line, and you're like, oh, it's just this part, or it's like this part, or, or whatever. But when you've got two dimensions here, you need the coordinate axes. You need two dimensions for your two variables. And that's why we use the Cartesian plane. So before we have a look at what this heading is about when you look at multiple inequalities, let's just revise back. What does it look like when you've just got one? Y is greater than or equal to x squared. I gave you a rule of thumb. Uh, it's not always exactly true because you've got to be careful with what's over here. But I gave you a rule of thumb when y was the subject. What can we say about this? Y is just going to be above uh, or equal to or equal to this equation here. We know exactly what that looks like, right? So go ahead and draw something for me. Critically important every time to label your axes. Uh, sorry, label your equations. I've drawn it as a solid line because it's um, inclusive. And you told me it was above. It was above. So I'm going to shade this part here. So this green shaded section here, every single point in there satisfies the inequality y is greater than or equal to x squared. So far, so good. y is less than x plus 2. This is easier than the one before. I'm going to draw a straight line as my boundary, x plus 2. You've noticed I've done it dotted. Because in this case, y is less than, so it's not inclusive of the boundary. Um, I should always label my equation here. And because it's less than, on which side am I going to shade? I'm going to shade, shade beneath. Or you could say to the right, but it's more helpful to say above or below because that's really what these inequalities, like these y value inequalities, are about above or below. So I'm going to shade down here. Okay, now this heading I've written, uh, multiple inequalities, is what happens when you say, well, what about if you consider both of these at the same time? Consider both at the same time. There's two different ways that we could do this, and I'd like you to make a little subheading for each one. So the first one is what we call the intersection of regions. When you have two different regions that overlap in some way, when you are asked for the intersection of those two regions, what that means is, when are these both true at the same time? Let me say that again. The intersection means both at the same time. The word that you will see attached to this is the word and. I want this to be true and I also want this to be true simultaneously. So I'm going to write each of these and I'm going to put an and between them. Now, do you remember um, when we were dealing with one dimensional inequality and sometimes you would find the answer to something would be lots of different pieces. There would be multiple inequalities. Something like say this, uh, if you were solving this, When you solve this guy, because you're so sick of seeing this quadratic, you should be able to see, oh, I know, I know the shape of this. I know where it's going to intersect with the axes. So therefore, x is going to be less than negative 3, or it's going to be x is greater than negative 2. That's to the left and that's to the right, yeah? Okay. And I made a big deal about saying it's all, all, because there's no number, there's no put thing you can put into x that satisfies both those inequalities at the same time, right? But when you have a look at these, there are points on the plane, clearly have a look, there are points on the plane that do satisfy both at the same time. So I can put and here, and if they put and, then you want both of those. Now, I'm going to draw up a new set of coordinate axes with these two on them, but I want to um, warn you, I want to warn you, even though, please note, in fact, just put your pen down and look up at this because it's such a weird idea. Even though this inequality here includes the boundary, 
When I draw the boundary down here on this graph, which includes both regions, on this one, I'm only going to draw it dotted. In fact, no matter what I've got, I'm going to draw it dotted. Some of it I may or may not fill in in a minute, but you'll see why shortly. Okay, so I'm going to draw the boundary of this, I'll draw it dotted. I'm going to draw the boundary of this, I'm also going to draw it dotted. And then I'm going to try and think about, well, when are these both true? So go ahead on our new third set of axes, draw both of them. Can you do that for me? Now, that wasn't too difficult to do because you'd just drawn them before, so you know what these look like. Notice that I've labeled the equations. Um, remember, by the way, y equals x plus 2 is a straight line. It's the boundary of y is less than x plus 2. This line here that I've labeled is not y is less than x plus 2. It's a line. It's y equals. Okay, now think. I want both of these to be true at the same time. I want to be above the parabola, and I want to be below the straight line. I want to be above the parabola, but below the straight line. There's one small region where both of those are true at the same time. Can you see where it is? It's the in-between part, isn't it? So I'm going to have this part here. Do you see that part is the part that's both underneath and above, right? Underneath the straight line, above the parabola. Okay. Now, we've got the basic idea here, but there are two things which I want to now be a little more precise on. Firstly, and I pointed this out with that um, semicircle that we did yesterday, unlike these guys here, which sort of stretch on forever, this region here has beginning and end points on its, its edges, right? Uh, specifically, this part over here, and also this part over here, okay? Now, think carefully with me. Um, firstly, we should find out where these places are. How am I going to find out where those coordinates are? Point of intersection. Say that again? Point of intersection. Okay, they're points of intersection. What do I do algebraically to get a point of intersection? I'm going to solve simultaneously. So I have one equation, I have the other. Let's go ahead and solve. So um, I think it's going to be helpful for you because you'll have like working attached to this. Tell me what you're doing. So I'm going to say, find points of intersection. Right? So I'm going to, um, conveniently I've got both of them as with y as a subject, so I can just get rid of the y's and say x squared will equal x plus 2. x squared will equal x plus 2. So I get this. What would you like me to do with this? I can factorise this. What's the factorisation? x minus 2 x plus 1. Yep, that's right, that's what I expected. So that's equal to zero. So what does that tell me? Negative one will be one of the solutions, or x equals two, positive two. Okay. Now remember, I'm searching for coordinates, right? I'm searching for coordinates. So I've got the x values. I would also like the y values to go with them, right? So when x is equal to negative one, what's y going to be equal to? One. It's just one, isn't it? And when x is equal to two, y is going to be four. I swear. And you can do a mental check to see that both of these will fit onto both lines. Since there's two points of intersection, why won't you say and? Um, I, I suppose you could. I suppose you could, actually. Um, though I should... Hmm. I mean, I suppose the reason why I've done it here is because a single value of x can't be both of these at the same time, so that's why I've just said or. But in this case, it doesn't make as much of an instrumental difference as this, where, as you'll see in a minute, when I don't talk about the intersection but something else, Putting all here actually makes a difference, whereas here, I just want the two points. Okay, I've got enough information for coordinates now, so I'm going to label this guy negative 1, 1, and I'm going to label that guy 2, 4. Okay? Now I want to ask, are these points in the region? Do they satisfy, remember, both of the inequalities at the same time? Let's just look at this one. Minus 1, 1. Does minus 1, 1 satisfy this inequality? Have a look. Minus 1, 1. It does, doesn't it? Because 1 is greater than or equal to 1. It's, it's the case where it's equal, right? What about here? Does minus 1, 1 satisfy this one? It doesn't. And actually, you knew that it didn't already before testing anything because in the first case, you drew this dotted, right? So therefore, this is going to stay hollow. By the same kind of logic, what's going to happen over here? Will this be filled or hollow? 
it will also be hollow because you need both at the same time, which is why if this one's out, doesn't matter what this one is, this one already says, no, forget it. Anywhere on this boundary will not be included in your region. So I don't include either of these, okay? Now, last part, you've dealt with the points of intersection. Now I want to look at the boundaries that are relevant, okay? Can you see this area is confined by this straight line and this portion of the parabola? Do you notice that? Uh, the straight line we already know is not going to be included in the boundary. How do I already know that? Because it's not in that Yeah, you just looked at the original one, right? And it wasn't included there, so you just leave it dotted. The parabola, on the other hand, part of the parabola should be included, right? This part underneath here is included. And you can take any value there, say 0, 0. That's on the parabola, right? You can test it out, and sure enough, it'll do this one and this one, right? But do you notice, and this is why I asked you to draw the parabola dotted at the beginning, even though it says there's the boundary included. Not all of the parabola is included, right? Have a look at a point up here. Why isn't a point like this, I'm just gonna put an X there. Why isn't the X part of the region? That's not there, is not part of the region, because even though it satisfies this, it doesn't at the same time satisfy this, right? It's clearly way above that line, which is, which is out, okay? So this is a little bit weird. You fill in part of that boundary, but not the whole thing, which is why I leave these guys dotted. Is that okay? Does that make sense?